Hey everybody, it's FLF here back for another weekly lineup and today I'm excited to dive into a breakdown or kind of a review of the only thing I want to cover which is the Adele video for Oh My God. Now as we kind of get into this, it's um, a little bit surprising to me. I think out of all of the artists that I've reviewed in the past, usually there's a theme with their music and their visuals. Um, and I, I could be just totally divorced from what Adele has been doing in her music or what she's been doing in her life because I, I really don't follow it right I know she has some hit songs I know she's released and, and done really well um, but I never really heard her music and, and was able to pick up on any themes tied to a cult like imagery or satanic like imagery or anything that was questionable really um, so most recently when she came out with her new album I think it was 30 I didn't think anything about it I was like oh yeah Adele's dropping a new album I don't really listen to her anyways um, so it just off my radar entirely. Then I saw a couple things popping up where I saw some images of Adele dressed like a nun or dressed like a, uh, some sort of like saintly figure. And I was like, what, what, what is this in reference to? And that's when I discovered that she released a new song called, Oh my God. And I don't even like saying it cause I feel like it's using the Lord's name in vain. So I'm just going to say OMG for the remainder of this video. But when I, when I started looking into it, it was kind of shocking, you know, to say the least, because Again, this is never a character who I've associated with any of this stuff. And not only the video itself, it's not like the song content was completely divorced from the video, but the actual video and the song both had some pretty heavy themes around kind of like uh, what I would say occult like imagery and thematics throughout it. So as we kind of get into this video, I want to look at not only the lyrics, but also the music video and a, a kind of a blow by blow breakdown on both of them. So first, let's dive into the actual lyrics, because I think this is where a lot of this stuff is going to be rooted in. So in verse one, here's what she says. I, I ain't got much time to spare, but I'll make time to show you I care. I wish that I would break my walls, but I'm still spinning out of control from the fall. Boy, you give good love. I won't lie. It's what keeps me coming back, even though I'm terrified. What's, what stands out to me is she says, I'm spinning out of control from the fall. Now, when we think of the fall, and you'll see this kind of tied in thematically with the video. I think of the fall of Adam and Eve when they took a bite from the forbidden piece of fruit, right? They, they bit it and that was considered the fall of, of humankind, right? That's when sin came into the world. That's when we went from that, that union, that communion with God that we're able to have that face to face to no longer being able to have that. And at the end of the verse, she goes on to say, it's what keeps me coming back even though I'm terrified. So I'm spinning out of control from this fall, from this fall into sin is kind of how I'm taking that but I keep coming back to it even though I'm terrified because it's so good, the love is so good. Now let's go into the pre-chorus and the chorus as well to kind of see how this breaks down. So the pre-chorus, I know that it's wrong, but I wanna have fun. I know that it's wrong, but I wanna have fun. So again, acknowledging, I know this thing that I'm doing is wrong, but I enjoy it, that's why I'm coming back. I've been spinning out of control, but that's why I keep coming back to it. The chorus, OMG, I can't believe it. Out of all the people of the world, what is the likelihood of me jumping out of my life and into your arms? Out of my life is kind of an interesting use of words because you could say I, I'm leaving my current life, the things that I enjoy doing to pursue a relationship with this person. But when we leave God, we are jumping out of life in a way. I think that's kind of a, a powerful phrase, even if it's not intended to be that way. Uh, maybe, baby, I'm just losing my mind because this is trouble, because this is trouble, but it feels right. Te teetering on the edge of heaven and hell, it is a battle I cannot fight. So again, like people will often kind of say I'm reading into things, but when you have all of this image, um, I'm spinning out of control from the fall. You give good love. I won't lie. Keep coming back to it. I know it's wrong, but I want to have fun. And then they go on to say I'm teetering on the edge of heaven and hell. It's a battle I can't fight. I, I don't know what else to really read into that, except that they're intentionally kind of tying in this imagery because they want either a shock value, they want to tell the story, but they're tying in this imagery, they're tying in these themes. In the second verse, she goes on to say, I'm a fool, but they think I'm blind. I'd rather be a fool than leave myself behind. I don't have to explain myself to you. I'm a grown woman, I do what I want to do. Pre-chorus again, I know it's wrong, but I do what I want. Chorus, still the same thing, teetering on the edge of heaven and hell. I, I'm in this relationship, I, I, I don't want to leave it. It's a battle I can't fight. And then on the bridge, which actually leads to the outro, you see kind of something interesting happens. She says, Lord, don't let me. I said, Lord, don't let me. And then at the very end, Lord, don't let me down. Now, I would argue here that this is a cry for help in so many ways, 
this is not, you are not pursuing a relationship with God and finding out that it's wrong, right? Like there's no, oh, this is a wrong thing to do. I feel, I feel bad about this. I'm teetering between heaven and hell because I'm following God. I think it is more about a callback to say, Lord, I am drifting away, but don't let me down. Now, again, whether Adele is saying this in a purely religious sense or to create the thematics of the project, I always tie back. People are going to be singing this. People are going to be singing these lyrics. People are going to be listening to this, ingraining them in their mind, committing them to memory, making them themes for their entire day, potentially. So the fact that it's in there, I think, is an important component we need to look at and take seriously because... The lyrics from the pen to the page, the lyrics from the page to the vocalist, the lyrics from the vocalist to the record, to the record, to the release. There's a lot of steps that go into this and a lot of eyes that are on these records. So the fact that she was able to have this in there, I think is very significant. Now, for the second part of this video, what I wanted to actually do is look at the video. So if the lyrics are saying this, what is the video actually reflecting? And we see a lot of the same things thematically. So the video opens up with an apple, on a chair and people usually tie that forbidden fruit into the apple now keep that in mind that this apple is on the chair then you go on to see adele performing there's doubles of her different areas and then she's introduced with two different characters and personalities but both of them having a halo around the back of her kind of deifying her in so many ways and she's talking to herself throughout the entire video then a scene is cut where adele is now dressed in what i would consider like priestly like garments i'm not super familiar with the Catholic Church, and I didn't actually research this before going on here, but it, it's like a, a priest garb, right? If you look at the Roman Catholic Church, this is what you would kind of see them wearing. The the shoulder coverings, the gloves, the the necklace, the, the neck garb. So this, to me, kind of looks like she's dressing like a priest very intentionally. Um, if you go throughout the video, you see multiple times that different things are highlighted, but one thing that stood out to me was that there was a large snake on this chair that everyone was kind of observing and dancing around as the move as the video kind of progressed throughout the entire thing and later on we see this circle of light this halo is lifting people up we see this theme quite often in music video from Lil Nas X Montero to formerly known as Twigs um, to the weekends video um, sacrifice this ring of light is always sucking people up or taking them down Kanye West with his album release he's being taken up into the middle of the stadium uh, we see this theme a lot right this like levitating I'm getting pulled up kind of theme um, then Adele makes her big reveal dressed as a priest with a halo surrounding her and still the same things happening around there's a lot of different scenes happening throughout the video and it kind of progresses as she's singing right and I would argue that many of these things are things that would be considered sinful in the most traditional sense. There is a man at one point putting on lipstick um, with um, uh, wearing like female undergarments. There's a couple on a bed who are about to sleep together. These are all things that biblically are considered sin and based on the theme of the song ties into those things. I, you know, I know it's wrong, but I want more. I really enjoy it. I know it's bad. I'm teetering between heaven and hell, but I still want to pursue. A lot of weird imagery throughout the entire video, but at the very end, what's the result? Adele takes that apple, that forbidden piece of fruit, she's teetering around heaven and hell, and then she takes a big old bite of it, right? Like that's what, that's what I think we all knew what the conclusion of the video was gonna be, is that from the fall, as she mentioned in the first verse, she's pursuing this love, and at the very end of it, she takes a big bite of the fruit, and now, voila, she has kind of entirely given in 100%. Um, and, and that's the conclusion of the video. So this video, again, oh my God, the theme of it, the lyrics of it, the visuals of it, all point to one thing. So I was very surprised by this when Adele actually released this. But I think it goes to show you that no artist is immune to this agenda. No artist is going to escape what the elites, what the occult wants to push. And I think ultimately even someone as big as Adele who might be able to control 90% of their music, or if she's, she's the one pushing this potentially, but even if she was able to control 90% of her music, there's still that 10% where they're gonna have a say so in it and be able to do what they want. And I think this might be an example of that. But overall, the theme is there. The idea is there, and I would encourage anyone who's a fan of Adele to stop listening, you know, and because I'm not going to go through the entire album, at least right now, and break down every song, every lyric, yada, yada, yada. But potentially, if we're seeing this in one place, it is likely that there's going to be other places where she's wrestling with the same kind of things. And I'm totally fine with an artist or people wrestling with their faith, right? Um, I think it's more about the misrepresentation of the character of God, the misrepresentation of the relationship dynamic that exists, and also the fact that 
people are going to be committing these lyrics to memory. They're going to be singing them and they're going to be singing things and saying things like, you know, I know it's wrong, but I want to feel good. I'm a grown woman. I could do what I want to do. I'm teetering between heaven and hell, but I love this relationship that I have. I think when you have committed those lyrics to memory again, and you're committing them to song and you're making them themes for your life or moments of, of, of time throughout your day, I think that's a dangerous thing to have those kind of concepts embedded in who you are and embedded in your memory. Now, again, this is totally from a Christian context. So take that with a grain of salt if you're not a Christian, right? I think that you would be better off not listening to this and pursuing Christian content. But at the same time, I, I don't want to cast this wide net to say, the way that I'm seeing it is the only way that it will ever be seen, because I don't think that's the case. But I do think from a biblical, Christian, Holy Spirit-led standpoint, this is exactly what's going on, and we need to be very mindful of it. Thanks again, guys, for tuning in. Be sure to hit the thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications if you haven't already to get alerted when new videos are uploaded. God bless, and let's light up Babylon together.